and I have the one and only Kevin Poon um, live from Hong Kong. And I just say that Kevin, many ho you're a serial entrepreneur, you're an art collector, you're a fashion lover, and many say that you're responsible for influencing a lot of the cool cultural trends in Hong Kong. Um, let's just dive right in and say that you are a cultural renaissance man. And for those in the art news community who are meeting you for the first time, um, we'd love to know how you would describe yourself. Um, I, I, I mean, everything's happened so organically, you know, I just was in love with basketball and street culture and then get into art and then fashion uh, and then, you know, food and beverage, lifestyle. I think it's all kind of converging into one nowadays. You know, people, um, you know, they like to eat, they like to hang out, they like to conversate. And I think um, it's just a very interesting time right now for the culture, especially how, you know, fashion and art and music and everything's kind of converging into one in technology. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here to uh, share with you guys my journey. It's incredible. And actually a lot of, uh, this has come up a lot in our conversations that sort of what it means to be modern is not to really fit into one bucket, but really to kind of cross into different sec sectors. Um, so your entrepreneurial journey, as you said, has been unique. Let's start with your brand clot which you founded in 2003. This is a clothing brand, a uh, street, street style. Um, so you started this with your childhood friend, Edison Chen. What inspired you to create this line? Well, I think at the time we were just really into basketball and sneakers and we were looking in Japan and you know, United States for a lot of inspiration. And at the time there wasn't that much happening in Hong Kong musically and also fashion wise and we wanted to create something that we felt that was part of our own DNA and uh, that was I think in 2003 which was really early on and at first we were just making t-shirts kind of like Ooh. art show before it happened and all and then you know slowly kind of moving on to you know we're now we're making furniture um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a fun journey. You can check our Instagram to know more about, you know, we were dropping a Polaroid camera this, this week. So it's, 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 it's fun. It's, it's I all saw fun. that on your Instagram today, the Polaroid. So tell us yeah. a little about that. Um, so, uh, Edison and I really love, um, uh, cameras and Polaroid is one, you know, something that we've been playing with all our childhood. And we had an opportunity to work with Polaroid on this. And we created, you know, three different cameras with different filters that you can take pictures and share with your friends. And it's kind of a collectible thing. So hopefully you guys will like it. So you can take an old fashioned Polaroid, but it has superimposed a filter. That's so exactly. cool. Exactly. That's incredible. Um, so a lot of what has been central right on point here is this idea of collaborating. So can we, can you talk us through some of the other kind of historic collaborations from Clot? Um, you've obviously just talked about the Polaroid. Like how did those come about? Uh, usually there's just like a mutual admiration, uh, you know, for a, a certain person or designer or brand. And then we seek them out or sometimes they seek us out. And, um, and that's, I think how real good collaborations happen, you know, just, uh, kind of coming together, putting your best foot forward and the other person and then creating something new. Is there one that you'd like to sh call out or one that you might might have been the most successful of all time? Um, you know, we, we do a lot of different ones, but, you know, one thing that's really memorable is, you know, working with Nike because it's one of our favorite brands. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've been collaborating them with them for a long time and just excited to keep on you know innovating the process and uh, we just also did something with Medicom toys a bear break you know so there's a lot of different things that we've uh, you know companies and people that we've worked with before uh, and hopefully we can keep pushing the envelope it's so interesting I read somewhere that um, Nike chose clot as the first Hong Kong based brand to do a collaboration with so other than, I mean, it, it, 
it's just, I was a former retailer, so I'm just very curious, you know, how, why do you think they chose your brand, Nike, of all the brands in Hong Kong to collaborate with? Uh, well, I think, you know, we, we chose, you know, we were, we were actually really eager to work with them as well, and we were presenting some of our ideas. But I think at the time, you know, they were excited about the energy that was going on. And I think it was very early on, and we had this idea of making a shoe that was, uh, you know, based on a lot of Chinese elements because we, mm. you know, we were really into reflexology randomly. So it's like, if you know <laughs> anything, um, just the pressure points in the, in, your, in the soles of your feet. So we created this shoe called the Kiss of Death. And, it, you know, we had a special box and everything. And, you know, uh, people were very excited. And that was kind of our first uh, collaboration with Nike. And this was maybe it. 15 years ago. So cool. Um, so let's switch the conversation into art because we are here on art news and you have, you started collecting more 15 plus years ago. Um, and we're one of the early proponents and supporters of cause, um, an artist that is very popular. And for those who don't know, it's K A W S the artist. How did you come across his work originally? Um, I think he was doing some shows in Tokyo at the time, and we visited one of his art shows at the at a gallery a gallery in Tokyo, and just been you know following the peers like Futura and Stash and all types of you know young at the time young creatives, and we were all just kind of you know just hanging out and really just you know I, I don't really even know, you know <laughs> just kind of fell into it and. Uh, and yeah, and since then, you know, um, we've had, you know, have a lot of different friends that kind of talk to me about art collecting and um, just getting into it. It sounds like all of your relationships are incredibly organic. They, they, they are yeah. not manufactured. Um, was there anything in particular that, that compelled you towards his work? Um, and was, was this art technically the first to launch your personal collection, your private collection? Um, I, I mean, I don't really know, but I do uh, love Brian's work. I think it's very innovative, uh, you know, the use of colors and how he crosses boundaries um, that usually, you know, are not crossed, you know? So I just think that how he, he you know, from maybe being, you know, uh, from New York and then, you know, globally, I think that's, you know, quite impressive what he's created. And yeah, I'm just happy to uh, be a part of that. Well, that's really interesting because that was something I w was planning to ask you later, but you seem very fascinated by bridging the gap between sort yes. of Western culture and Eastern culture. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why that speaks to you, what resonates and just how you continue to support that vision? I just think everything in this world is interconnected, you know, um, whether, you know, whether it's Europe and America, Japan, Hong Kong, China, I think the world is a small place and it's interconnected. And I'm just fascinated by um, just bridging things together. I think it's really interesting because maybe also because I live out here mm -hmm. and all my friends are back there. I'm always trying to find an excuse to, you know, hang out and do fun stuff. And so it just happens, you know, I think happening organically is the best thing. So one thing leading to another, you know, how I met Vajra and now I'm talking with you, you know, everything <laughs> happens very naturally and that's the way I like it. That's fantastic. Um, okay. So let's talk about how you discover art in general. And I know you're going to say it's organic and it maybe just happened, but can you tell us that, um, like, are there friends you trust in the industry now that you've sort of in the journey of collecting? Yeah, you know, I think that you go a lot to? of great uh, people that I learned from, you know, Darren Romanelli is one of them. Uh, I remember going to his studio early on in L.A. and he was just showing me all the stuff that he was collecting. Catherine Bernhardt, Daniel Arsham, uh, Jonas Wood and all these great artists. And I was just learning from him and then. You know, Bill Brady is another guy that, you know, I learned from a lot. And just from Instagram, I think Instagram is a great place to learn about new artists and, and you know, look at archives and just, yeah, just go art fairs. I think yeah. are great. 
Art News is a great platform to learn. Art News, <laughs> yay, go Art News. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, really excited. I know, it, it's true, Instagram has really created this very, you know, open marketplace to really study and learn. Um, so let's talk about some of the artists that you actually just mentioned, because I know some of them are part of your collection. Jonas Woods, George Kondo, Eddie Martinez, Alex Israel, I could go on and on, Sterling Ruby. Do you want to talk about just maybe a little bit about the aesthetic of some of these artists? Why they just, why do they speak to you? And why, why are they worthy of, of your of collecting? I'd be, I, 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 I'm like the smallest collector, so I, I, don't, I don't by any means have any authority like to speak on this, but I just respect what they do. I think each of the, the artists are very special and some of the stuff they do, I really i am attracted to and I try to seek it out and I just have opportunities to, to, to like them, I guess, early. Um, and... I don't know. I'm just humbled that you guys are even asking me these questions because <laughs> I actually have no answers to anything. <laughs> well, how much of the decision making process would you say is like gut level emotional versus um, like a, of an investment? I mean, or or research? Well, I think it, it's hard. I think it's hard to buy art for investment because, you know, coming from Hong Kong, everyone buys real estate or stocks as investment. And I guess for art, you really have to like it. Um, and you really have to be able to live with it. And I don't know, it just has to feel natural, I think. Um, there's a lot of people that uh, buy art, you know, as an investment. I think it's, it's interesting too, but for me, it's just, uh, you have to really enjoy it. Can you tell us a little bit about what hangs behind you right now? Because yeah, I can't uh, stop staring at them. Yeah, some, this is Tomo, <laughs> some Brian's work without showing too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about, you actually opened an experiential kind of pop-up shop and yeah. How do you pronounce it? Whoa? Uh, wow. Wow. So it's W-O-A-W, which is World of Amazing Wonders. Yeah. Um, so talk to, so I like find it so fascinating. What, what to you is a, an amazing wonder? Well, I, I don't really, I think in the beginning, we just wanted to bring in certain different things that we found fascinating, uh, whether it's gadgets or books or magazines or art editions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, recently this year, I had the opportunity to work with Case Studio uh, to curate a few shows at the space uh, with Christina Bam Bam and Charlie Roberts. And the reaction was so overwhelming. People were very interested uh, in the works and, and it started giving me confidence to show more art uh, artists and you know art shows so it, it's been kind of a, a learning experience really uh, to just you know be able to show stuff that you like and people are receptive of it and I'm starting to you know curate more shows uh, hopefully be able to show what I like to people um, in our region yeah, I mean, it's, and, you seem to have such a sense of what people will find. I mean, you look for the, the unique things that are not there. It's the opposite of mass production. And I think it's also interesting right now because, you know, art is crossing boundaries, right? And I think it's, you know, it's in fashion, it's in music. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's so interesting. And then now people are creating a lot of edition works. And mm -hmm. I think it's just a, very interesting to, to keep the culture moving forward and to, you know, try new things. So you, you're making me want to ask this question now. So you seem to almost have a cultural crystal ball of sorts. 
what do you think the next big idea is? It doesn't, it could be art, it could be fashion. Like what's next? Well, I think um, maybe technology and art is becoming really fascinating. Uh, there's this app called Acute Art that I've been logging into that's really cool uh, that you can uh, download uh, certain artists' work and then you can, you know, share it with your friends. I think cool. it'll be interesting to see how technology plays into art. And I don't know. Uh, right now, I just want to uh, showcase a lot more of the young artists' work uh, to people that uh, follow what we're doing and hopefully um, be able to find a way. Are you going to, do you foresee yourself kind of taking advantage of more virtual opportunities? I mean, obviously it's kind of right now, it's a bit more challenging to show things in person. Sure. And I also think, you know, there's, there's a lot of cross pollination between technology and, you know, uh, people are risk, I think uh, traditionally in China or in, you know, uh, Hong Kong, uh, there wasn't uh, the big understanding of art and people are now respecting artists' as intellectual property. Mm -hmm. and that. So I think um, you'll see, I think you'll see more public art installations and, you know, maybe we have a lack of museums, but we have a lot of shopping malls. So, you know, mm -hmm. it could be a place for people to learn about art. And so I think um, it's just, I think it's an interesting time. It is definitely, definitely that. Um, love to know what your favorite piece of art that you actually own is. And if it changes, that's okay too. Yeah, I mean, it's hard <laughs> to say right now because it, it's, it's changing all the time. But uh, I, I was really into, uh, uh, so Todd Kramer has this artist called Anya that I, I, I'm really into. Uh, I'll send you a link after, but I, I just acquired a piece from uh, Todd, uh, Anya's work, which is really great. Um, I think Charlie Roberts is really amazing. Um, I'm looking forward to Nara's show in LA. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. And then there's also, I think Brian's doing a show at the Brooklyn Museum, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening, so I, I'm just tuning in. You you don't want to hurt any of your children's feelings. <laughs> I mean, this, I, I don't know. You love I them really all. Know, you know? <laughs> um, is, there, is there a piece of art that you don't own or an artist you don't own, but you've got your sights on? I mean, I know you just mentioned some new artists, but. Yeah, Ed Ruscha. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've been <laughs> trying to get one, but I don't know. I have to really look deeper. All right, all right, you're manifesting right now. You've got a good audience for that. Uh -huh. um, and Kevin, what, I mean, you've given us so much great information. What, what is next for you, um, if you're willing to share personally, and what is next for you professionally? Um, well, right now I'm just trying to have a family. So I've just been working with my fiance on building that. Uh, uh, and professionally, I think, just keep just keep it going. I just opened a new cafe, uh, Elephant. Oh. We have a coffee roastery. So there's a new facility in Hong Kong uh, that we roast our coffee beans and we make pastries. Um, hopefully be our, able to. Yeah. Sorry, will you say the name of the company again? Because it cut out for a second. Elephant, uh, Elephant Grounds Coffee. And is this part of the retail experience for you? Is it part of one of your stores or is this a standalone concept? This standalone concept is separate because uh, we wanted to create, you know, there wasn't really good coffee uh, a few years back and we created a, a brand that uh, serves great coffee. So check it out. And how can I'll we get it in? How can we get it in the US? Hopefully I'll be able to bring it stateside soon. Um, uh, fingers crossed. And uh, right now you can only see it on Instagram, I guess. So Kevin Poon is in the coffee business now. And what is the graphic or visual on the packaging? I'm curious what is the aesthetic of the coffee is. Um, I think I have it here somewhere. Um, <laughs> wait. He's coming gonna, back with his coffee. Don't I'm leave. Gonna to, I'm going to have to send it to you because I, I don't have it here. But it's, it's black and orange. Um, okay. 
Yeah, and uh, I'll actually send you some if you give me your address. I will definitely do that. I am addicted to caffeine, right. um, even though I probably shouldn't drink as much as I do. Is there anything else? You've got this captive, and I have to just tell you, a lot of people are staying up late in New York City for you or on the East Coast for you. Oh, everyone is so excited when we announce that this interview is today. Anything else you'd like to share with the art news community just about your, your business ventures? I mean, I just want to say uh, I don't, I'm still learning about art, so I'm by no means, you know, an expert in any way. So just if you have, you know, I would love to share with more of you guys, but I'm not claiming that I know anything. So please don't uh, think that I'm saying that. No, well, I think the purpose of this dialogue really is we want to bring people who are moving the conversation around culture in general forward. And you are definitely doing that. So we're really um, trying to include there's we, we've been talking to people in the fashion industry, not exclusively artists or people who are the greatest experts of all time on art, but really people who are moving the conversation about our culture forward. So on that note, we just want to thank you. This has been a delight. Thank you for getting up early and doing this for us. Um, and we really hope we can continue a dialogue with you um, moving forward. Thank um, you so much for having me. And thank you so much for allowing me to say my piece. Absolutely. We enjoyed every moment of it. And we are signing off. We'll hopefully talk to you soon, Kevin. Thank you so much, Brooke. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.